I like Romania and I'm, I'm feeling very well here. Reg doesn't matter the problems that I had and all these things. Hi, welcome back to Random Romania. Given the success of our last video, we've decided to interview our sponsor because it just occurred to us that he's lived in Romania for 10 years. Um, he's, uh, he's French and um, he has this business that makes uh, solar power systems and such like. And anyway, here you go. Here's Mark. Mark, tell us what brought you to Romania in the first place? The wine. The wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. No, I'm kidding. This yeah. is a long story, actually. Cool. So, but the basic idea, why did you come here? Uh, I came here so almost more than 10 years ago as a volunteer. Mm -hmm. So I was in France and I was looking for a different way of life. Mm -hmm. I traveled a lot through Europe, North Africa. In France, we don't know much about, about Romania. And I have this idea of the countryside, people having um, a life like how it was in France maybe 40 years ago, 50 years ago. That's why. And uh, I started on uh, on this uh, woof, woofing you know, website. Oh, yeah, yeah. Send a few requests. And the guy from, a French guy actually, mm -hmm. from uh, Fagarage, said, okay, you can come to our place. So I planned a trip from Belgium to Poland with the plane, then from Poland to Ukraine, Moldova, Romania, and back to uh, friends. Okay. So that was my trip. And I said, okay, I will end up my, my trip as a, I will work as a volunteer two or three weeks in, in Fagarash. And this is how I reached Romania for the first time. And how did you get into this business? I mean, it's a pretty interesting business to, to have got into. Oh, you jump from how I reached Romania to my business. Uh -huh. This is also another long story. Uh -huh. Just, just, just long a, or the, ba short? the basic idea. I mean, basically, the <laughs> the people who are watching are, I think, why the the last videos work so well is people who are coming from other countries. They find it very interesting to see what okay. other people have achieved here. Because, like, from an outsider's perspective, like I haven't known you such a long time, and it seems like you had a very interesting journey to to get here and then do this uh, amazing business. So, it's amazing for me, anyway. I don't I don't know how you make it work, to be honest. <laughs> So I started the company in uh, December 2013, okay, and we are in 2023. Soon it's going to be 10 years. Mm -hmm. And just before uh, starting this trip to Romania, I started. Con uh, I bought a Porsche 944 mm -hmm. in uh, second hand. It was cheap then, and uh, I started con converting it in France. Actually, the car was okay. Converting I, it to electric. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Of course. I did it then. I was on the local newspapers, mm -hmm. and I I looked for uh, to get it street legal, which wasn't it wasn't possible in France. I kind of put the the project on hold and had this trip. After my trip in Romania, I was in France, and on the way, <laughs> like always, you know, there is something in the middle. I met a woman, mm -hmm. a girl, and she said, "Hey, I would like to." see her once more to see if there is something between us. I took my car again, went to Romania and never left the country since then. I mean, I, I stayed here. And uh, I spent six months in Bucharest, mm -hmm. Bucharest and then we moved to Pitești. And uh, I started looking for people or who did the same thing, you know, converted a, a car to electric. Why, did, why did you choose Pitești? Something connection with the Dacia factory? Randomly. Or, or just randomly? Yeah, and I was looking for something close to Bucharest and close to the mountains. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's why. I started looking for, um, let's say, business partners, not business partners, I was doing that you know, on my own, so I didn't have any business or something, I wasn't earning money. I was pretty poor then, mm -hmm. let's say. So it was at the very beginning. And I found two guys, I mean, who actually converted the car here also, an old seat, to electric. And it was registered. That's, that's the old Citroen, right? Yeah, yeah right. So the, the, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. And they so, got it road legal? Uh, so I started working with the first guy and I said, I, I, I brought, no, I went to France. I dismantled all my Porsche 
and I brought all the parts here. And I bought an old <laughs> Dacia Logan, the first one, you know, and we started working on it. We made it electric. I had a few problems with the first guy, <laughs> like always. Uh, uh, this is Romania, you know. I didn't have the papers. I knew nothing about the country and I was a bit lost. And I said, oh, I trust you. You will fine. I pay the car. We put it on your name and then we do the, the papers. We work together, it was okay, we convert the car, it's fine. And I talked to the to make it street legal. Mm -hmm. And it's Romania. The guy asked me money. And I said, what for? The car is on my name. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know? So I said, I, I trusted you. Okay. I said, what do I do now? Ah, I'm kind of a uh, stubborn guy and I don't like these kind of situations. I took everything, I removed everything from the car and I said, okay, take the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we went to the police and all this shit because I, at the beginning I didn't want to give him the car. Mm -hmm. Went to the police, the policeman said, hey, he was complaining about against you and all this shit. Mm -hmm. The policeman also asked me for money. This is Romania. Mm -hmm. And I ended up removing everything from the car and I bought another car and I started working with another guy who was helping me. I, Obviously, I needed people to help me. I was, mm -hmm. I wasn't speaking the language, and you know, when we didn't know the, we don't know the country. It's not so easy to make your car legal. So somehow, I finished the second car, which was the same. Just moved the parts from one car to the other. So, from from the, that's a, that's a basically the the early days of the business. So, how many people do you employ now? Uh, twenty. Uh, no. I had up to 20, we we uh, oscillating between 15 and 20. 15 and 20. And the, there's three branches to the business, right? So we started with these cars. After doing uh, all uh, the first car, we made an, another few pro prototypes. So from one project to another, we ended up making this uh, race car, a race car, Golf. Yes. And for the race car, we had to make a mobile charging station. Mm -hmm. So we took, it was easy for us, we took a, a few Second Life modules from Tesla, Victron inverter, uh, our, one of our BMS, and we made, we made it in, I don't know, one week. Mm -hmm. So we had the, something to re, uh, charge the car while we're in the mountains, mm -hmm. hill climb stuff and racing, because there was no plugs, obviously. And then uh we said hey we could maybe use or sell this solution for energy storage mm -hmm. for solar systems and actually it was 2015 and i don't know if you've even um to uh 2015 uh, 17 sorry and i don't know if tesla released the poor wall yet or it was at the very beginning so no one has something like this on the market we said hey maybe we could try to do a a few for customers and we started selling this kind of battery packs mm -hmm. for houses for uh, commercial purposes and we started uh, started then this new brand brand which is kit of grid we figured out that uh, a lot of even companies they don't know how to wire all the systems yeah. and they did a lot of mistakes yeah. so we said okay well we take care of everything we pre-wire everything and we, we ship you uh, to you the full solution, everything pre-wired, updated and with the battery. So you just have to plug it to your, to your network or to your house. And uh, this worked pretty well. We sold many, many systems like this and we're still selling. Mm -hmm. But now maybe we're selling bigger batteries now. We're focusing on to, into industrial systems. And that's it. From a small solution from, from us, we started a new business. And for next year, we want we want to sell containers. Yes. So I want to sell your containers as well, <laughs> as we've discussed. Yeah, this I, is okay. I, I think this is a great idea. I think yeah. that, that's really neat. It's a great idea. And it's, be, it's beginning to be a problem for European Union. There yeah. is so many cars on the market and already... There is a lot of salvage cars, and we have to do something with the with the yeah. with the bat well, like, battery Well, I get the, the the using the batteries instead of re recycling them, like chemically recycling them, is hugely wasteful, right? Yeah. Like what do they call it? Upcycling or something? You said when you take it? Yeah, we say we are upcycling. I mean, we uh, they have uh, the last time is gonna be t t twice or maybe more than twice the, the what was planned, mm -hmm. reusing them on solar uh, energy storage systems. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the idea. Better to, than uh, smash them to take the so, copper, aluminum, all this stuff. Yes. Because actually, uh, from 100 battery packs, maybe 95 of them are still very good. This is not end of life batteries. This is yeah. this is salvage cars. Yeah. So maybe some of them. They, uh, I mean, have... I guess some of the stuff that's done on I insurance or yeah, or um, recalls, they're perfectly good batteries, right? Most of them. And you can you can test them to work out. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure, sure. We test whether they're good or not. We'll put uh, a lot of information that we've discussed about Mark's business in the description of the video. Uh, something I wanted to ask you about is how is it finding the technical people you need? Because I know, I'm asking this for a reason, I know there's a lot of Romanians started watching our videos and maybe there's people looking to get involved with this kind of work and maybe you'll pick up some employees from, from the video. So what, tell me what kind of people you, you struggle to find and what you need. Also, we've got, you remember, there's a, a bunch of Westerners coming here looking for work, right? Yeah. So explain what you're looking for because this could be useful. We we're looking for people into uh, for wiring, for programming, for developing solutions. You know, so you have to be. I think the key is to be involved. You know, uh, we don't work as a big factory. We're very. Um, we it's like a big family here, isn't it? I, I, yeah, it, it I noticed is. because I, that's what attracted me about the business when I came over <laughs> here. Because you're you're very approachable, and so are all your guys. You know. Because I want to, to to try and hijack your workshop at some point for some of my future <laughs> future YouTube projects. So this is, this is something I was thinking about. It's more artistic, you know. We try to develop stuff to uh, bring something new. You know, yeah. once it it, it uh, goes into production, uh, you know, mass production, then, then for me less interesting. Yeah. So, so you enjoy the prototypes and building, finding yeah, new yeah, solutions yeah. and this we kind do, of stuff. We, we're now very good in doing prototypes all the time, yes. new, new solutions and new solutions. And um, what kind of problems have you had here? What, what would you say you're the, the most irritating thing about doing a business in Romania is? And what's the best thing about doing a business in Romania? It's very difficult to keep the, the people, the team. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It looks like it's not into the in, in the culture like in France or maybe what I heard from Japan, you know. People are very involved. Now here most of them they live really e easily for I don't know, without real reason, you know. Mm -hmm. Even if they are, they have they are a good salary or Romanians are very proud. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I saw. And uh, yeah, they easily quit the job. This is difficult. I did my best, and uh, I'll told you it's like a family, but even like this, it's still very difficult to keep the people. So staff turnover, basically. Yeah. And, and um, what do you like most about doing a business in Romania? How, how do you compare Obviously, it with doing a business in France, no, for example? It's it's easy to have a business here because I don't have problems with, the, I don't know, they're not pushing me to, to, to check everything, all the things that we're doing, people are... You know, in France, maybe a lot of people said, okay, I won't do that or that or that because I don't know which reason. Here, people are okay of working, doing stuff. And it's cheap. It's cheap. This is this is changing. It's not so cheap anymore. But yeah, this it helps. Did you ever think to go back to France? Or your life, you see your life here. It's here now. Uh, it could be it could be anywhere, you know? Yeah. I'm not linked to a place or another. But uh, friends, what I saw in friends doesn't uh, suit me anymore. It doesn't. It's not appropriate. I mean, country's changed too much. Uh, it's changed a lot. I don't know if before it was uh, okay for me, but it, I think it's 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 not what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. It's changed a lot. It changed a lot because I see it because sometimes once it was two years. I spent two years in Romania without going in France, to France. And when I went back, a big change. Yes. It's weird. Yeah. That's how I felt about England. It's, yeah. it's, uh, well, now, now when I go back to England, I haven't been for a few years, but when I go back, it feels like a strange country for me. It's, it's, it's quite, quite unusual. I so would you, you'd encourage other Westerners to come here? If people are thinking about getting out of the West, you'd encourage them to come here and do businesses? It's not as hard as it, so, as it might appear? I think uh, Romania is a good place to base a business. Like, if you're doing a, a sales business with the rest of Europe, maybe if you want to sell into to Western markets in English, for example, 
the, so, there's no harm basing a business here. I think it's a good place to do it. If it's a, if it's a product you can sell online. I like Romania and I'm, I'm feeling very well here. Reg doesn't matter the problems that they had and all these things. So I'll say, let's not think about myself because I traveled a lot and I'm used to, I adapt very fast. But my a few friends came here, my mom came here and they didn't travel that much that I did. So, and I saw that they like also the country. So this makes me believe that indeed it's, it's, it's really a nice, a nice country or we have very uh, good life here. That's been my experience too. I mean, I, I, I rarely find a Western that's come here yeah. that, that it hasn't, it doesn't tell a reasonably good story. You know, you get the occasional ones, but the vast majority, they really like it. I mean, they find, find the people really friendly. Yeah, I just talked to my mom. So my mom, we, you know, we, we Catalan and we, but I was uh, born in France. She spent a lot of time in, in Catalonia, in Spain, just like me. And she's now, she went back to Spain for, uh, it's been one month. And she knows the country, she knows French, she knows uh, Spain. And she was telling me that, that, that she, she felt better here than in, in Spain. When she knows the country there also, it's not a surprise for her, but I said, I said, people are not the same. She was talking about the food, the taste of the food and all the products and, and the, the life more expensive. The food, the food here is fantastic though, isn't it? Yeah, everything is very tasty. And uh, I mean, it's really easy to, to meet people. You can go anywhere. Just Friday, the, my neighbor was going at the wedding and he said, hey, are you coming to the wedding? I said, this is weird. I don't know the guy. And he said, no, no, I will call. <laughs> Please come with me at the wedding. And I was like, no, I'm not, not, not feeling good about this. And he was starting to be mad. And like, like well, you're not the one to come. I just called the guy and said, hey, Mark is coming with me. Is it okay? Yeah, sure, it's okay. So yeah. I ended <laughs> up at the wedding on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Not planned. And we had fun. It was very nice. Yes, very cool. Well, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I, anything I, else you want to say? I have a lot to tell, but for the next video, it's too we much can, now. Yeah. With the police. So any, anybody got any questions for Mark, put so, them in the... Put them yeah, in the yeah. Put them in the comments and we'll, uh, we'll we'll come back and make more videos because Mark's sponsoring our channel to some extent at the moment. So we want to we want to promote his products. Really? How much? Sorry? No, you're not paying any money, are you? <laughs> I just have to sell <laughs> I just have to sell your stuff so we get some commission. That's the idea. I wish you were paying some money. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks very much. And uh, we see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.